Yeah, well, I grew up in a dairy farm in Greenleaf, Wisconsin. Started showing cows and going to county fairs. When I was five years old, I started staying overnight, helping at the shows. It kind of gets in your blood, so you kind of get addicted to it. Probably 40 years I've been clipping cattle. I guess I've always kind of been a collector and never really liked to throw anything away. So the older these clippers got, the less of them that were around. And uh, I was able to get a brand new clipper, and I kind of saved it in a box, put it away in the closet. And I decided, well, it should be on display. And the World Dairy Expo was having their 50th anniversary, so I thought that was a great time to build this display and let other people know about the history of the Stewart Clipper and the history of John Stewart, the great American inventor. He's invented the clippers. He's invented heaters for Model Ts. He's made the flexible shafts for odometers on model cars. Well, I started collecting about 10 years ago. This is the first electric clipper that Stewart came out with in 1930. You could purchase it for 1850. And if you wanted to spend an extra dollar, you could get the aluminum handle with it. This particular model's World War II. They took all the aluminum out of it because they made planes with the aluminum. So. This one would weigh about two more pounds than a regular clipper. And this would be an original oil can. This you could purchase for 15 cents. This is the original. So this was made from 1890 to 1905. It was a two-man operation. The hard part was the guy cranking always had to stay at the same speed so that the guy running the clipper had knew how fast to go. It's a slow process. So the blade on the left would have been made in 1945, and this blade on the right was made in 2015. So essentially the blade design stayed the same for almost 100 years. What I like about using the old Stewart's is there's no air holes like the modern clippers, so when you're doing a top line, your hair doesn't get messed up, and just the balance of it. They might be a little bit heavier, but once you get used to the weight, the balance is really nice. If you want to really be a good fitter, you just take 10 heifers and tie them up and fit them and just practice, learn from people, you know, and don't be afraid to try it. It's like anything else, the more practice, the better you get.